Well, it's good to be saved. Good to still be saved. I got saved a long time ago. But I got up this morning still saved. What a blessing. You know, there's a lot of things to be saved from, though. I'm glad I'm saved from hell. I'm saved from my sin. But as we look at missions, I'm, I'm going to have to be saved from something else, and that's the tendency of all of us to be a little self-centered in life. And I really need to be saved from myself if I'm going to be what God wants me to be. It's a joy to be here, a blessing. And thank you, Brother Tim, for letting me come and just be in the meeting. And I hope your heart's on missions tonight and on the Lord. I want you to take your Bibles with me, please, to the book of 1 Chronicles. I don't know how your pastor does when he goes out and preaches to other churches. And sometimes I say, well, what do the church need? What do these people need? And usually I, I don't really know what that is anyway. Your pastor would know, but he never tells me what to preach. I ask him. Last time I was here, I said, what do you want me to preach? He, he just never tells me. He probably knows better than I what you need. Of course, all the Bible's good, but you know, sometimes as preachers, we just preach what we feel like preaching. We preach what's on our heart, what we're thinking about, what we're meditating on. And that's tonight and probably tomorrow night. First Chronicles chapter 11. What a character David is in the Bible. From the heights to the depths to everything in between. In 1 Chronicles chapter 11, the Bible tells us in verse number, let's see, where do we want to start reading? Verse 15. Now three of the 30 captains went down to the rock to David into the cave of Adullam and the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the hold and the Philistines garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it but poured it out to the Lord and said, My God, forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives, they brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. God will bless his word. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and making me whole and giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. Lord, thank you for these, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And let, Lord, as we go through this journey of life, as we're on this pilgrimage, help us to count for Jesus. Help us, Lord, that you may get all that's in our lives that we could offer to you, that you'd get the very best of us, that we would do our very best for you. Lord Jesus, we know that you love the world. You gave yourself for the sins of the whole world. Lord, I'm glad you love me, but I know you don't just love me. 
I'm glad that you love these believers that are in the church house tonight, but I know that you don't just love us. Your love extends to the four corners of this world. You're trying to reach out to man with your love. Help us to be involved. Help us to be your instruments and your ambassadors and and your servants, Lord, to accomplish your goodwill and your purpose in this time and for this hour. And please add your blessing to this message. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is a most amazing story. Has such drama, it would make a good movie, I would say. If you wanted to make one. The first thing I see in this text is a man that's thirsty. And look at the emotion that comes out of his mouth in verse 17. I think sometimes we skip over the punctuation of the Bible. You know, when God puts some punctuation marks in the Bible, it's for a reason. It's, here we have an exclamatory mark. It's showing the excitement, the depth of soul, the zeal, the, the heart that's put in the statement as David cries out in verse 17, David is longing for something. He's longing, he's desirous of it. The Bible said, and David longed and said, I don't know if I can say it like he did, and I'm sure people were standing around, but he said, oh, oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. Oh, I want to drink so bad. You know, they're fighting. They're in a big battle here with the Philistines, and they've been battling for some time, and they'll continue to do that. And in any warfare, there's a lot of weariness. In any warfare, in any battle, there's a lot of discouragement sometimes. There's you get tired, you get worn out, and David is in the midst of the battle, and maybe you can somehow associate yourself with this thinking. If you've been at it all day long and you've been working hard and you've just come to the end and you've not had anything to drink a while and your, your mouth is a little parched and you're, you're thirsty and you just, maybe the heat of the day has been pressing on your head and, and oh, just for a drink of water. We take that for granted here in the rush of battle and the discouragements of battle and the hardships of battle. David's just thirsty. He, he wants a drink. He just wants to sit down and drink and satisfy his thirst. And I want to tell you tonight, that's the picture of, of a man's thirsty soul. Longing. You see that? David longed. Oh, if I just had a drink. Well, David, we've got water here in the camp. Now, you've got to understand. You've got to put your thinking caps on with me. You certainly don't think that in this cave and with all these people that there's not a drop of water to be found. I mean, you can't live without water. An army can't move without water. There's got to be some water around there somewhere. But David's just not crying out for water. He wants a certain kind of water. You know what we find men are calling out and they're longing and they're, they've got cravings on the inside of their heart and they're calling out and they've filled themselves with all different kinds of, of the wells of the water of life and they, they can't quench the thirst and they can't satisfy the need. We got people all around our country, all around the world that they're, they're, on the, they're on the back of a needle trying to satisfy their thirst. They're swapping partners and relationships trying to quench their thirst. The flesh is thirsty. But you see, when you go to those wells of the flesh, they, they don't satisfy the longing. They don't take care of the problem. It's not just any water that he's wanting. Amen. You know, some water is not fit to drink in the world. Just because it's water doesn't mean it's good to drink. Doesn't mean it, it's not going to make you sick. Oh, you talk about 
Romania, brother, I can fill you in. So I I'm, I'm go to Romania. Maybe I, 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 I lose track of where I've told all the stories at. But I love drinking iced tea, unsweetened tea. I drink it by the, by the jug. And I had, my wife had this little thing that, that brews and percolates the, the tea like you would coffee. So nobody else in my house, we're all drinking bottled water and all that. We've got filters on the stuff. And, but I'm thinking in my mind, all right, that's brewing it, so it's all right. There was a flood in our neighborhood. We lived way out in the countryside, and there were sheep and goats and cattle and everything known to man, and we were on a well. We had plenty of water. And when it flooded and rained, there's water everywhere. And I didn't know that the well wasn't sealed very good. And all the feces of all the animals from every God's creature under God's heaven flew into that well. And I'm thinking, boy, this is good tea. <laughs> few months I was sick, bad sick. But then, you know, I did what some of you do with your sins that you still go to the well after. I, I got a little bit better and it put it off and just kept drinking my tea. It'll go away. It'll be all right. Then it came back twice as bad the next month. I got a little worried at that time. I tried to do a few things, but I didn't understand I was drinking from the wrong well. Right. I did a few things, thought I would take care of the problem, but I kept drinking from that same well, and the last time it came back, it was so bad. I, I was seeing things. I, my partner threw me in the car, drove me to the Capitol, where there was an American doctor at the time, he tested me, he said, your body is full of parasites, just full of them. You need to be hospitalized. I said, not in Romania. <laughs> he says, what have you been doing? He started asking me questions. I said, well, we had a little well problem, but I said, my wife, you know, my, she, all I do is drink tea and she brews that. And it, it, He said, you know, you thought you were all right, but you're not all right. You know, some of you think you're all right, but you're not all right. And you're just going to get, the more you drink out of that well that you don't need to be drinking, it's water all right, but it's not meeting your needs. It's really making you sick. And you can put the, you can put the filter on it. It ain't gonna do you need to change wells. Right. You drink from the wells of this world, they'll not, they'll not satisfy you. You know all water is not the same water, even if it's clean and drinkable. Have any of now maybe maybe you you don't notice this. Do you know that water has different tastes to it? There's some water that I've drank that I just put it down. I don't want any more of it. I mean, I feel like I'm drinking out of the toilet bowl. It's water. It may be clean, but I don't want to drink it. Does it taste the same? I'm trying to get into David's mind. What is he thirsty for? It's not just water in his mouth and in his belly. His mind goes back to his days of the boy and growing up at home there in Bethlehem. And he remembers the well that is at the gate of Bethlehem. And as he would draw water from that and water would be brought into his home, oh, there never was a taste like that water. I think I understand that. I lived in Virginia for some time and pastored up there many years ago. And out of those five, I think our well was about 500 and some feet deep. And in that well, 
That was an area where there's limestone everywhere. Stone, it just limestone everywhere under that ground. And that limestone would not only purify that water out of that well, but it would give it a taste. And even to this day, if, if I had my druthers, amen, I'd, I'd go back to Virginia and I, I'd get me a big bottle of that water from that well because coming out of that limestone well. And did you know that over there in the Holy Land around Bethlehem and all that area are some of the biggest limestone? I'm just talking out loud. David said, I don't just want any water. I want that water that tastes good. I want that water that's pure and satisfying. I, I just long for a, another drink. I appreciate this water we have, but oh, I want that water over there. We have so many writers that have taken to pen and written things that have emphasized that in our hymn book. I thirsted. In the barren land of sin and shame and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ, one day I came where springs of living water did abound. All my life long, I had panted for a drink from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Another song goes, Oh Christ, he is the fountain, the deep, sweet well of love, the streams on earth I've tasted more deep. I'll drink above. There too an ocean fullness. His mercy doth expand. Not in where glory dwelleth in Emmanuel's land. Yeah. Amen. David said, I really want, I know we're in a fight. I really would like Bethlehem's water. I want you to think about that. One day the angels came down and announced to the shepherd, there's something different in Bethlehem. There's glory in Bethlehem and there's peace in Bethlehem and there's a water of life in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are little and you're the least among the thousands of Judah, out of you will come he. Oh, there's something special about Bethlehem's water. There's something special about the Lord Jesus Christ that was the, he's the well. He sat down by a well with that woman and he says, I'm thirsty. And she said, well, here's some water. He said, yeah, but I, 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 I've got a well that you need. Amen. It's so much better than the well you're drinking at. Right. Yeah. David's longing. He's longing for the water from Bethlehem. That special water in that special place that's pure and has no other, no other like it, no other rival. I want to tell you tonight, there's no other rival than the water that our Lord will give us. And this world is thirsty. And they're crying. They're longing for something. They just don't know what water. This is the best water. I see something else, not just the, the thirst of a man. I see David's thirst. David's thirst. I can imagine in my mind's eye, I have these soldiers around him, and he's got all these mighty men around him, and Oh, I want to drink, and I want to drink from Bethlehem's well. And I hear the soldiers, did you hear what David said? 
He, he wants a drink, but he don't want anyone. He wants the, the, well from, the water from Bethlehem's well. And the Bible says, if you look back there, 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles chapter 11, the Bible tells us in verse 16, David was then in the hold, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. So the Philistines have set up headquarters. They've set up shop right there in Bethlehem. That's their headquarters. And David said, I'd, I'd like a drink from that well over there. I can see those men start talking among themselves. Well, that's crazy. What's wrong with the water around here? I don't know, but he don't want the water around here. He wants the water over there. Well, that's, that's dangerous. There's no way that'd take, that'd take a miracle to do that. Well, we'd have to fight all the way through enemy lines, all the way to the middle of their headquarters. And then you think they're going to just let us draw the well up from? It's at the gate. Totally exposed. And the men say, I don't know. And I, hear, I think I hear another man say, I tell you one thing, I love David. If David wants that water. I don't understand it. I know he's not going to die if he didn't get it, but if, if that's what he wants. Another guy said, you can't do that. You, another guy said, I tell you what, man, I, I killed, I, I don't know how God did it, but he empowered me. I killed about 300 the other day all by myself. Yeah. Yeah. They said, well, you can't do that. I mean, do you understand? You've got to go all the way through their lines, all the way to the middle of their headquarters, draw the well, and then you've got to come back. And that guy says, I tell you what, I didn't have a life before David. And if David wants it, you guys do what you want to do. I'm going to go get him some water. Or I'm going to die trying. And another man says, no, you're not going to go alone. You want to go, I'll go with you. You know what David said? Oh, that one. Oh, that one. He didn't get one, he got three. I don't know where the rest of those guys were. You would almost wonder. They'd get up and say, let's go. Why didn't they all get up and just charge? They didn't love him like those three. You know why they were the mightiest? They loved him more than they loved their own life. I want to ask you a question tonight. If you knew the Lord wanted a drink, would you go get it for him? If you knew there was something that the Lord Jesus Christ really wanted more than anything else, even if it didn't make sense, would you lay down your own life just to please him? Just to please him? Would you break through enemy lines? Would you hazard your own life just to put a smile on the face of the son of David? These three men said, we'll do it. We'll do it. Whatever you want, we value. We value what you want more than we value our own lives. You know what he wants? He wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You say, well, it's impossible. It's behind enemy lines. Exactly. This brother has no idea where he's going. I know where he's going. Yeah, he's going to go to the devil's backyard. Well, that's not safe. That's not, that's not going to be a successful journey. These men say, if David wants it, let's go, boys. You do know what a water boy is, don't you? A water boy is what nobody wants to be. I grew up playing sports. I was 
playing football for our high school coming up, and uh, we had water boys. But you know what? They never got to play. And we who were on the field just sort of looked down at them, you know, because they weren't, they weren't good enough to make the team. And we were out playing on the field, and when we got tired and we come on the sideline, the water boy is supposed to come around and say, here, you want some water? What a disdainful occupation, right? Yes, if you're giving water to a bunch of stupid blockhead guys in high school. Here's my question. Would you be willing to carry the water for Jesus? Would you be willing to carry the water to Jesus? We have the water of life. You want to be a water boy or you want to be a big shot? These three guys, they could have been anything. You know what they said? We'll just, we'll just go get water. You mean, are you going to do something important with your life? Come on now, we can take this hill, we can, we can defeat uh, the Philistines in this battle, and all you want to do is go get some water? Yeah, yeah, but that's what David wants me to do. Right. But you know what? This is amazing. David didn't command them to do that. They volunteered. Well, wouldn't it be good if we had some volunteers tonight? Say, so, Lord... Where do, where, where, what do you want? What can I do for you? How can I be a blessing to you? Where can I carry the water? What enemy territory can I take? Oh, these guys are such heroes. They are such mighty. They are the mightiest, number one, because they value David's blessing over their own life. But they're also the mightiest because they're totally selfish. They didn't even think about their lives. They hazarded their lives. They, it looked like they were throwing them away. They were the mightiest because they had the mightiest faith. This was unreasonable. It was impossible. It was against every odd. I, I want to see the movie. I want to see the picture. I don't know if one guy's at the well getting the well out while the other two are slaying hip and thigh. Can you get the picture? It's one thing going in, but now that they're in, they all know they're there. Now they got to get out. And they say, all right, here we go. I tell you what, don't worry about your arms, your legs, your head, but save that water. Because David wants that water. Oh, what faith. You think you can muster up a little faith to give a faith promise? You think you can muster up a little faith to do something for Jesus Christ, to give your life for the Lord? Could we have a, a little faith? You don't have to have that faith, but won't you have a little bit of faith? And please him. What courage. Oh, what courage. But they did it together. And I'll tell you what, church, you can always do more together. If you guys will get together and pull together, I, I, I don't know. I've not asked Brother Fleur. I'd say there's probably a portion of this church that's carrying most of all the load. I don't know that's true, but that's normally true. What if everybody pulled together? You know what I think? I think these three guys needed each other. I think they needed each other to get to the well. I think they needed each other to get back to David. And they had courage and it was contagious. <clears throat> and I can just imagine in my mind when they walk into camp, I don't know if they're beat up. I don't know if they're bloodied. I don't know what shape they get in. And I can wa watch them walking into camp carrying that water. Here you go, David. Did you ask for it? You wanted it. Here it is. I bet David's face lit up like a Christmas tree. You don't mean. Is this the water of bed 
Bethlehem, from the well of Bethlehem. Yes, sir. We fought all the way through, and we fought all the way back, and it's a miracle of God. We can't believe it happened. God had mercy on us. The power of God was with us. But here's what you wanted, David. We're giving it to, back to you. And I can see the joy in David's heart, and I can see the gladness in David's heart. And one of these days, my friend, you if you're saved by the good grace of God, you're going to meet your king. You're going to look into the face of your master. You're going to look into the face of the son of David. And I just wonder, is he going to go? You did it. You pleased me. Or is he going to look at you? And then there'll be shame. I don't know about you, but my whole life would be worth his smile. All my blood, sweat, and tears, anything that I've given, anything that I've done, anything I'll ever be, if I can go into the camp and walk up to my king and I can make him happy, I'm fulfilled. You want to be a water boy? You want to put yourself behind and sign up for something that really pleases Jesus? You know what I really think? I don't really think, I don't think he really cares about what kind of houses we live in. I just don't think he really cares about that. Because he didn't even have a house. <laughs> and he's building us one that's so much better. I don't think he cares about our pets. Sorry. I, I just, I don't think the Lord up in heaven goes, oh, they got another one. I don't think it excites him. I think probably very few things excite our Lord about our lives. But when you are selfless and when you do something just to please him and when you try to take the water of the word of God and the water of life to a world that needs Jesus, you'll put a smile on his face. Amen. You want to be a water boy? I see a, a thirst of a man in this chapter. I see some men that were willing to be water boys and give their lives. But I see something else. It's really strange. When they get the water to David, the Bible says David would not drink of it. It almost looks disrespectful if I could say that. These men have almost died to get David what he asked for. And once they put it in his hand, he says, I can't drink this. If they had been Baptist, they'd have been bitter and left church. You mean I'm unappreciated? I mean, do you know what sacrifice I've gone through to give you, and you're not going to drink it? David says, I'm not going to drink it. Well, what are you going to do with it, David? David would not drink of it, verse 18 says, but poured it out to the Lord. And said, my God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives, they brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. You say, well, that seems to be a waste. It seems to be a waste. Their whole life they put on the line, and he pours it on the ground. What a waste. Oh, it's not a waste because, you see, David did that before God. He poured it out to the Lord. You ever heard in the Old Testament, this little, you ever heard of what a drink offering is? Oh, you find them in so many places. You find them under the law, but you find them in other places. You find them with Gideon. You remember the angel of the Lord? There's your appearance of the Son of God before the incarnation. The angel of the Lord appears to Gideon. And says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you and you're going to bring victory and, and deliverance to the children of Israel. And Gideon's so happy that 
that God has met with him. He said, wait, 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 wait. I, listen, listen, I want to bring you a present. That's what Gideon says. That's the word he uses. I want to bring you a present. And so he runs and he makes this meal and he brings this meal back. And the angel says, thinking, I guess, that the angel would eat with him. And the angel said, put it on the altar. He put it on the altar. He said, you got a big pot of broth there, don't you, Gideon? He said, I do. He said, pour it out. Well, I made this. I this is my family recipe, and this, this is good stuff. And the angel said, pour it out. Pour it out on that altar and let it run down in the dirt. Oh, but I fixed this, and I went to great trouble to make you a wonderful meal. And the angel said, pour it out. And he poured it out. And the fire came down from heaven. And it was an offering to God, acceptable. You remember when Jacob met God at Bethel? You guys remember that? Oh, he met God. And God changed his name. Anybody had their name changed here? I, my name's been changed. I was a dirty so-and-so, but amen. I, I've got the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He's given me a new name. He's changed my life. He changed my life. That's what he did for Jacob. He changed his name. And Jacob said, boy, I want to make a sacrifice. The Bible said he made an altar out of those stones, and he made a sacrifice, and he poured out. This is what the Bible says. He poured out drink offerings to the Lord. Just, he said, preacher, what a waste to pour good stuff on the ground. Yeah, that's what the devil's telling you about your life and about your money. What a waste it is to, to give my hard-earned money to, to, to get the gospel. What a waste it is for me not to live the life I want to live and, and just pour it out on the ground for Jesus. I don't even know if it matters. But see, if it's an offering to God, it's holy. If it's offering to God, it's acceptable. If it's offering to God, it, it, it pleases him. David says, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to pour this out to the Lord, and this is going to be my offering to you, O oh God, because I see David there. Oh, what a picture of, of, of Jesus. What a picture of Jesus. Do you know two times in the Bible, Jesus said, I thirst. And when he said that to that woman at the well, he never did get a drink. She got to drink. And when he was on the cross, he said, I thirst. And the first thing they put up to his mouth, the Bible said, he would not receive it. You know why? Because he's given you a drink. And he's given me a drink. And he's suffering my hell. And he's suffering your hell. Right. You know what Jesus Christ said? He quotes it, the Bible says in Psalm 22 uh, about our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he says, I am poured out like water. That's Psalm 22. That starts, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You drop down to verse 6. I am poured out by, like water. He's thirsting, but he's pouring it out. Isaiah 53 says, Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He poured out his soul for us. Amen. I see a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in David. Because you know what I think David's thinking? Watch it now. Watch it now. I know David. I think I can see David in the Bible. He's looking around, Brother Tim, and he sees all these other people that aren't going to get to drink. This is the best water but I'm the only one that has it. How dare I drink this while nobody else gets to drink it? How dare I enjoy this and nobody else gets to enjoy it? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just pour it out unto the Lord. Have you ever thought, why should we be drinking from the well of Bethlehem when nobody else gets to drink it? Why should we enjoy? Jesus poured out his own soul. 
He was poured out like water. He thirsted to give you a drink. You think maybe you could get a little bit thirsty. You could give something up a little bit so somebody else could get a drink of God's pure water. I see a picture of Jesus. He would not drink it. He poured it out to the Lord. But I, I see another picture here, and I've got to finish. Though this looks disrespectful. David says, I am not going to satisfy myself. I, I can imagine when he gets the water, he's so happy. Oh, what a blessing. I can imagine him bowing his head saying, Lord, you're so good to me. You've given me all these men that are willing to die for me. And Lord, you brought me this water. And I wanted it, but Lord, I, I didn't really expect this. And Lord, you've just been so good to me. Every need you've supplied. And, and now you're even giving me things that I want. And I don't deserve this water. Oh, what a blessing that people have laid their lives down to give me this. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing. What a what What a blessing. God, you're so good to me. I don't really deserve this. But I do know who does deserve this, God. You deserve this. I'm the king, but you're my king. And I'm the ruler, but you're my ruler. And you've been so good to me. I don't deserve men putting their life on the line for me. I tell you what, but you deserve that, God. And so I'm going to take these blessings that I have. And I'm going to take these, the goodness that you've bestowed upon my life. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour it out. I'm just going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out to you, God. I, I really want this. I'm thirsty. This is a blessing. I, I, I want this more than anything, Lord. I've longed for this. But Lord, I love you more, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour this out to you, God. I'm going to pour it out to you. I'm not going to drink it. I'm going to give it to you. Church, I'm finished. Listen to me. You know what we're doing? We're drinking our offerings. We're lavishing all the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the blessing that God's put in our hands. We're drinking our offerings instead of pouring it out to God and pouring it out to the world. Oh, you've been blessed. God has put the water of life in your hand, but instead of you just drinking it, why don't you pour it out to him? All the good things of your life, all the blessings of your life that you have never deserved, instead of just enjoying it, why don't you pour it out to him? We are consuming all of the goodness of God for ourselves. Guys, I'm an American. I know what I'm, I preach to Americans. I pastor Americans. I'm so glad God that's good to you. I'm glad God's good to you. I really am. But is it all for you? Are you just going to enjoy it? Or would you give it to God? David's offering. Water? Yeah, water. You know what that tells you? No gift given to God is too small. He'll even take water. You remember what Jesus said? You give a cup of cold water. You know what we're doing with our cold water? We're drinking it, not giving it. Pray with me, would you? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the best water.